Okay, before I start this video, can we just agree to not talk about my hair because I am aware that it is weird. I guess this video is kind of like a life in the NS. Uh, you guys not, might, might not be aware, but we're not allowed to record or take any photos inside camp. It's a chargeable offense and I will be thrown into DB, which is known as detention barracks, which uh, or a confinement. So I cannot leave um, the camp premises. I cannot come back home every weekend. Um, so basically, honestly, I am very, very lucky that my enlistment fell into the, the, the holiday, Deepavali, because realistically speaking, for every enlistee, the first two weeks, you're supposed to stay in the camp confined. It's the adjustment week. Uh, you're, you're adjusting into uh, the military life from civilian life. And the whole point of, of, of you know, the first two weeks is that you're detached from your home and you're you're really settling into this army lifestyle and that you're you're supposed to get into the mo into the army mood you know you should really get into the soldier um standpoint the perspective you're really bringing yourself into that area and that's essentially what they tried to do for me and it were i mean obviously i've learned so much just in the 10 days i've i've changed uh quite quite a lot i thought someone was there I've changed, I've changed quite a lot uh, in terms of my perspectives and how I do things, um, my attitudes towards, towards certain things that I, I would have disregarded before, but I take things seriously now. Um, I've learned a lot of new skills that I've never before. I'm actually CPR certified now, actually. Um, so if you guys are, if I see you lying on, this, lying on the street unconscious or unresponsive, I am certified by law to, to save your life. If I will do it, I don't know. I might not do it. <laughs> I'm joking. I'll probably do it. But uh, anyway, the point is, there's a lot of things that you learn in the military, which I believe is you can't pay and get that kind of experience anywhere else. It's it's really a one in a lifetime experience that people get, and I am honestly quite happy that I am in this position to 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 be able to receive this kind of to experience, to be able to to partake in this in this journey. And what I have planned for you guys is, so presumably every weekend I can come back home. And since I'm not allowed to record a, a video or, a, or a take photos inside the camp, I think I'm allowed to record voice notes. So what I might do is like make like a voice note vlog, kind of like, kind of like, I guess it's kind of like a podcast, but not really. It's just, I'm just going to be making up uh, one week summary. Maybe one day I'll just be like, what did we do today? Uh, what's interesting funny things that happened uh, interesting things that happened what is going on tomorrow what happened yesterday etc etc it's just the kind of stuff that you would uh, want to know on a day-to-day -day basis for people in the army and if you're watching this in Singapore and if you're going to enlist or if you're a and already enlisted and you finished uh, NS if you're an ORD if you ORD already then this might just be like a recollect recollection of memory um, just a nostalgic moment but I am here to share my experiences and and any new things that I've learned, uh, what to bring and what not to bring uh, to the enlistment process. Um, for those who know these terminologies, I am in the PTB batch, which is the physical training program. I think it's the program. I'm not sure what the last P stands for, but uh, BMT is the basic military training. That is, for me, uh, combined with the PTP. So that's a four months of total, two months of physical training and two months of a basic military training combined together so we'll do them side by side we'll physically train and do the bmt together instead of just training physically and then going into bmt for those who have passed their ippt test which is the uh individual physical proficiency test i think i, I think it might be wrong the abbreviation but if you've passed that two weeks before your enlistment you'll be directly going into your bmt phase which you could do very much if you would like an extra two months of freedom um but I, I failed the first time I tried. Um, I would like to claim that it's the machine that was the problem, but uh, once I went inside the camp and I realized that honestly, I'm just not strong enough. I'm pretty weak, and I, I'm openly happy to uh, to you know declare this because, well, it's the truth. I'm not strong enough, and that's the whole process of PTP is to make you stronger. They make you exercise every day, do a lot of work. And it's, it's tiring, it's hard work, but when at the end it all matters and it, it will all come out in a positive outcome. So I'm quite, I'm looking forward to that. 
So the first day for me was quite interesting, actually, because um, before Corona, you're supposed to bring your parents into Takong. Your parents come with you uh, and then they they stay there with you. And until like 12 o'clock, I think, or 1130, they eat lunch with you and they go back. Then you start your your technically your first day there. But that was not the case with me because I am a Corona enlistment enlistee. I enlisted during the corona time, so therefore my parents could not make it to Takong. I didn't know this, and neither did they. Uh, we assumed that it was, it was still possible because, well, in Singapore, there's literally no corona cases. Literally single-digit numbers. Even I don't even think there were any cases today and yesterday. Uh, most of them are not even community cases. There's imported cases. But regardless of that, I, I had assumed that, you know, it's fine. And they're already in phase two. It should be fine. We should be able to go through this. But no, that was not the case. Once we got there, we were informed that, you know, parents are not allowed. This is the last place that they can drop us off and they have to go back home. And I was honestly heartbroken because, well, I won't be seeing my parents and my family for, what, 10 days? And the last I get to see them is out of nowhere, out of the blue, um, right there where they had to leave me. They took a photo with me. It was me back when I had my hair and fully shaven. Um, and yeah, that's... That was pretty much the last time I saw them. And then yesterday night at 9 p.m. I booked in. I mean, I booked out of Takong and I came in. I came home, um, which was an interesting experience, actually. I had McDonald's first day, man. That was good. Mike Spicy. Um, yeah. I am in the fourth school, which is in Rocky Hill Camp. Uh, apparently, it's claimed to be one of the best schools, especially for its food. And my sergeants are just so amazing. My sergeants and my sirs. Um, they're just amazing people. They're very nice. I'm, I'm very lucky to have uh, have them as our commanding officers, uh, commanders, because they're genuinely really good people. Yeah, so the food there is pretty good, actually. Uh, not that bad. It could be worse, but it's, it's okay. Breakfast is terrible. Just don't even bother eating breakfast. That's how bad it is. Other than that, I would just tell you to be strong. You would, you would, you would like it more than you think you would. Uh, honestly, for me as a person, when I walked into the camp, I felt really bad. As in, like, I really felt like I, I, I don't want to be here because... I really thought the military life wasn't for me, but the more I, more I stayed there, the more I realized. Well, actually, I kind of like this life. It's, it's kind of nice, you know. I, I like the challenge. I, I like the fact that we have to wake up at four o'clock every morning. I, I like the fact that, that we get limited time on our phones and we do a lot of exercises. In the moment, you hate it. Like you seriously just want to leave. Like when we're doing exercises and stuff, you just like you want to get out of there, but you can't. But after you're done, you're like, you feel, you, you have this feeling, I think it's just endorphins and everything, but you get this really calming feeling. You're like, wow, yo, that exercise felt good. Like, especially after a run, mostly after runs, like you get so tired, you, you, the energy is draining away from your body. But after you sit down and just, I mean, not sit, just stand up there with your arms around like this, because this is the optimum position for, for your um, lungs to open up so you can breathe more oxygen in that that time you're like wow dude that's just so refreshing and then you're just you're filled with sweat all over your body like you get full on so wet the, the shirt's all wet your your pants all usually wet because we sit in the grass sometimes and the grass is wet because it's raining and it, you're, you're just you're in this homeland um our sergeants ta taught us that it's homeland it's home soil um we should not be afraid to sit on it we should not be afraid to be to get dirty because it's our land. It's the land of us. It's our people. And you might be asking, why do NS, right? It was one of the first things that they, they talked to us about when we got to the, the camp that the first day. They're like, why, why serve NS? Why do we need to protect our country? And it was a one simple answer. If not us, then who? It, it's a very, very good answer because, well, if not us, then who the hell would come and save this country? Right, because we as the people of Singapore need to do what is our duty, which is protect our country. Obviously, I am not a Singaporean, I'm a PR, but regardless of the fact, I also have a special place in Singapore for because I was born here anyway. So this country has given what I needed to provide for my family so that I would be born. So in that way, I kind of have respect for this country and it's a pretty good country. It's a pretty damn good country. Just not something I'd see myself living in. I honestly don't want to live here, um, but it's it's still a good country regardless of my opinions on whether I want to live here or not. It's not somewhere I want to live or be in, but it certainly is a country that I would visit because it's just such a beautiful place to be. Uh, it feels like home. 
but um, yeah, you know, but that's just me because I'm not from Singapore. If you're from Singapore, then you might feel differently. Obviously, you might feel differently, but just just know that you have you have a lot of people there to help you out. You're forced in this in this. Um, you're basically in this area with a bunch of random people you've never met before. If you're lucky, you might know some of them. You might have met them before in school or something like that. But for me and everyone else there, we had never met each other before. The first two days, we were so silent. We, we never even talked to each other. We were so quiet. Um, but then slowly, we had to work. We were forced to work together because you're in an environment where if you don't help each other out, you will all suffer. Like they will literally pin you down to the core if you don't work together. It's like forced cooperation. But that forced cooperation was something that I truly appreciate because I got to know really good people. They're the friends that I've made in the army, they're genuinely great people. Uh, they're all honest. They're all very good guys, really. Uh, very funny people as well. They just make you laugh. It's nice to be with them. And there's always one thing that you must understand is that when you're together with them, right? Whether you fail together or succeed together, you're always together. You do everything together. Um, there is no individuality. There is no me. It's always us. That's what the army stands for. It's it's us. You know, it's a collective. It's a unity. It's a it's a group of of people synchronized together, uh, all working together to achieve one target, one goal, and that's essentially what I believe the the military is attempting to achieve here. And it certainly is working. I've met a lot of good people. I've never had tumble friends before, actually, to be honest. Um, like good ones that I've known. I haven't had any. But the, as soon as I came here, I've met like five, six, maybe even more uh, great, genuine people that I, that I can relate with who are also Indian, who speak the same language as me, who look like me. Um, to me, it's it's good. It's quite nice. I feel, I feel happy. And I also met a lot of new other people. I've, some, I've met Malaysians, I've met Singaporean Chinese, I've met actual Chinese. And um, it's been really nice because I can bond with them with not only in one language, but like two or three different languages because I can just, because I, 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 you guys know I can speak Chinese and Indonesian. Indonesian is kind of similar to Malay. Uh, it's a bit different in some slang words. In, in, in a bit, it's a bit different when it comes to a few words. But here and there, it's pretty much the same. And um, I've been able to understand what's going on and I can always communicate between these these different different clusters of people and it's always nice to have a, a wider perspective of, of, um, of opinion and I find myself in this position so I honestly really do think that this is a great opportunity for me as a human being to to be a part of NS and I think you guys will genuinely like it I mean, obviously now I can't say much because I only have very little time. Tomorrow morning, I came here last night. Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, I need to go back to the camp. Uh, because obviously I'm still in my two-week confinement period. The only reason they're letting me go is because it's a holiday and I'm Indian and I celebrate it. So they have to let me go by law. Technically, they're supposed to give me Monday off as well, but they can't because like I mentioned, I'm supposed to be in confinement week. But my confinement week is ending coming Wednesday. Um, it's the 14 week period. So after that, I think Friday I'll be booking out again and I'll be getting a four day uh, holiday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and I think I'll come back on Tuesday. That's how it should work. I am not sure at all. But on the pamphlet that my parents got the day I was enlisted said on 23rd of November, uh, yeah, 23rd of November, I will be getting a block leave, which is what that means. Block leave is, it's blocked. I have to get that holiday off. So that's all I know so far. But um, if you guys have any questions, please ask. Obviously, I can use my phone in the camp. Um, you can charge it, but you can use your power bank. Somehow, I managed to use everything uh, like perfectly. I had, I was able to use my phone every single day, and I still had enough battery to last me when I came back home. I'm charging my power bank right now. Uh, it can last me another 14, 15 days, but I only need it for five days because you know, well, I'll be coming back home. I can charge it directly from my charger here. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys, for this video. If you have any questions, just ask me in the comment section below. I can always answer. If you want, add me in socials. Um, I actually need to buy a few things to bring back to camp because I might have brought the wrong thing um, there. So that's pretty much it, I guess, for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this.